When it comes to finances, millennials tend to get a bad rap. The stereotype of avocado-obsessed young adults sponging off their wealthy baby boomer parents has prevailed. But that's not everyone's story. Do you have a question about money? Tell us what you would like us to answer and if your question is chosen, we'll investigate Darcy's world changed irreparably when her father died from pancreatic cancer six years ago. Along with the grief of losing her dad, finding out about her parents' dire financial situation was another blow. Growing up, we never felt poor. We never had to ask for anything, we were a pretty comfortable family, the 32-year-old said. Darcy's parents had managed to buy a house in the 1980s, but hadn't put aside any savings and there was still a large chunk of the mortgage to pay off. Mum and Dad had a very traditional relationship, Dad worked and Mum looked after the house, she said. Dad looked after everything related to the finances. For most of his working life, Darcy's father had run his own business, and hadn't put much aside for their retirement. A plan to help out mom so Darcy and her two siblings came up with a financial plan to help pay the mortgage, which included Darcy transferring about $800 to her mom's bank account every month. For me it wasn't a question of if I'm going to help my mom. It was dad's not here, this is what we're doing, she said. The other part of the plan meant Darcy's mother had to return to work and get a lodger to move in to help cover the costs of the mortgage. Darcy's mother hadn't worked for 30 years and had very little work experience, but she got a part-time job. She works in a school kitchen but she's got limited skills, she doesn't get paid a lot of money, Darcy said. So upkeep of the house is the biggest burden. But selling up the house and moving somewhere smaller has not been an option. It's also really difficult because my mom is really emotionally attached to the house, so she doesn't want to leave it, she said. More older, single women experiencing housing stress Older single women have emerged as the fastest growing cohort of people experiencing housing stress and homelessness, according to the Mercy Foundation. Many women, like Darcy's mother, stopped work to have a family, and women on average retire with half the super of men. It's got to do with the gap that's related to gender and the roles women might have had in the 1950s and 1960s, said University of Queensland's Dr. Murray Peterson, who researches older people and poverty. The policies and practices in place to do with work, where women were expected to leave their roles and have a family, there's still a legacy from that. On top of the super gap, for those who did continue to work, oftentimes they were also paid less than their male counterparts.
women only received equal pay for work of equal value to men in 1972, but there is still a gender pay gap, with women who work full-time earning on average $240 less per week than men. And for most people, the aged pension alone is not enough to live comfortably in retirement. It's a perfect storm, she said. You can manage to live on the aged pension if you own your own house, but not if you're paying rent. Talking about money can be difficult psychologist and relationship therapist Son Kuman said money was one of the hardest topics for families to talk about. Especially when parents are getting older and there is a change in dynamics, with the younger generation telling the older generation how to manage their money, she said. There's a bit of a role reversal. No one ever wants the roles to reverse. While Darcy doesn't see helping her mother financially as a burden, it has had a big impact on her own life choices. I'm at a stage where me and my partner would love to buy our own house, or potentially we're thinking about starting our own family in the next three to four years, she said. But we haven't been able to save much money because I've been helping out my mom. We're teaching her how to budget Ms. Cumin said the money and the time involved in taking care of parents can be a huge source of disharmony in a couple. It's certainly becoming an issue in Georgie and Dave's relationship. The Newcastle couple are in their late 20s with a mortgage, as well as the expenses associated with having a young family. But they're handing over about $50 a fortnight to Dave's mother. Last year they helped her find a new second-hand car, and paid for the bulk of it. I'd say guilt, you can't say no to your mom. It's as simple as that, there's no one else she can really turn to, Georgie said. Dave's mum separated from her husband about 20 years ago, but moved back in with her own mother until recently. She's never had to live on her own and do things by herself before, Georgie said. This week we're changing her banks to a fee-free account. It's a nice little start. Georgie finds the situation frustrating, particularly because she feels they're missing out on holidays and fun activities, while her mother-in-law is often spending on luxuries, not necessities. It makes it tight. It's really frustrating at times when we're going without certain luxuries and seeing her go and buy them, she said. It puts a strain on my relationship. And the couple are worried for her future. She didn't start working until 10 years ago and her super is much smaller than other people her age, Georgie said. She'll be on the pension, and there's a good chance we'll have to support her when she stops working. Ms. Cumin said it was important to talk about the situation openly if it was causing tension in a relationship.
It's really about having as many conversations with your partner as you can, coming to agreement about what you see as your position and then going forward together, she said. Independently licensed financial planner Trisha Peters gave financial support to her own parents and now, looking back, thinks she took too much responsibility for their future. You've got to remember your parents are capable adults, so you have to respect their agency, she said. You can't step in and take all the responsibility, which is probably where I went wrong a bit. Financial support can be a cultural expectation while a big life event like death or divorce can create the need for financial support, for some families it's a cultural expectation. Across Asian societies this is standard, University of Technology Sydney social scientist Dr. Christina Ho said. It's probably something you will find on every continent. It's more traditional understanding of family and it might be that Western countries are the exception. Filial piety is a central value in Confucianism and is about deference to one's parents and other elders in the family. It might include taking care of them when they're old or providing material comforts. Not only is there a cultural expectation of the duty of children to look after their parents, in most Asian countries there's no other way for elderly people to be looked after, Dr. Ho said. There isn't the same sort of welfare system in place. It's common for family members to move overseas for work and send offshore remittances, money, back home to help the family survive. In fact, in 2018 offshore remittances were worth almost 70 billion US dollars to the Chinese economy, 80 billion US dollars to India and about 34 billion US dollars to Mexico. To be a good son or daughter you must share your wealth Valentina, who now lives in Australia, says young adults support their parents in many South American countries, too. At 23 years old, when she graduated from university and had a steady income, she started sending about $300 home to Colombia. Parents don't say it to you, but everyone does it, she said. So, you assume that to be a good son or daughter you must share your wealth. Valentina says without the extra financial support, her parents could only afford the basics. My sister does the same. Obviously, they do not ask for anything or abuse us, she said. I save weekly and pay for things like urgent repairs for the house or their car. But she says she does not begrudge it. Mum and Dad worked hard all their lives. They paid for my university fees and all my expenses until I was 18, Valentina says. I want them to enjoy life now and have some spare money. Names have been changed for privacy reasons. Contact Emily Stewart.